Morning Glory, that's the name of the song by Guanita Bainan. It's a very lovely song in the morning. As you wake up, as it says, Morning Glory, that shows the very splendor of God in the morning. This morning, I want to welcome you all this morning for joining in our morning devotion today is the is the last uh, day in the month of august and so we are thankful this morning that god has kept us to another month we are still in our right minds we are still able to hear to see to talk and so we have much to praise God for this morning. So let me just officially welcome all of you this morning. Praise God. Let me welcome all of you this morning. All right. To our morning's devotion. Um, all of those who are streaming. Yes, I pray that God blessings will be upon you as you look this morning and be refreshed this morning in your spirit. As we look into the word of God. Today we are dealing with 
another theme. And our theme this morning is forgiveness, God design. Forgiveness, God design. Yes, forgiveness, God's design. And so I want to share a story with us this morning. My devotion is a story, but it's a story from the Bible. Uh, in the book of Philemon, a very small book in the Bible. One chapter with about 25 verses. The book of Philemon, it's right between Titus, yes, um, and Hebrew, right before you reach the book of Hebrews. A book of by the name of Philemon. Now, this is uh, one of the the best story, uh, a fascinating story about forgiveness. As it deals with <clears throat> a man by the name of Philemon and his slave by the name of Onesimus. So I'll share the story with us this morning and listen to the story as you glean from it what God is saying to your heart and my heart as we deal with forgiveness, God's design. So, a little background on, on, on this, this book. This letter, the letter of Philemon was written by Paul. Paul the Apostle wrote this letter while he was in prison and he sent this letter to Philemon. Now Philemon was a Christian brother. Yes, Philemon was a Christian brother. But he was also a slave owner. He owns a lot of slaves during those times. Maybe he had owned slaves before he became a Christian. But what we know about his history is that he owns slaves. And Philemon, Paul, the apostle, wrote this letter. He, at one point, Paul said, I wrote this letter with my own hand. Paul, the apostle, wrote this letter and sent this letter to Philemon, who was a Christian brother, as I said, but he was also a slave owner he owns a lot of slaves and one of his slaves named Onesimus this slave named Onesimus ran away somehow he had done some things wrong he may have robbed his master Philemon and Onesimus the slave ran away Onesimus at that time was not a Christian so he robbed his, sir, his, his, his master and ran away. No, he ran away and he met the Apostle Paul in Rome. And so it was during this period, Onesimus seems to get himself into other problems. And Onesimus ended up in prison with the Apostle Paul. So I want you to listen to this fascinating story of forgiveness. And that's what we're dealing, forgiveness, God's design. And so Onesimus now, this slave who once worked for his master, Philemon, that is the book of Philemon, who Philemon was a Christian servant, a Christian slave owner who owns a lot of slaves. But this slave did something, ran away. This slave ran to Rome, met the Apostle Paul, somehow in prison. He did something else, end up in prison, and he met the Apostle Paul there. Now, in, in, it's only carry one chapter. It's a very small book. So I'm going to read some portion of it to us, for us to understand. So it says, To Philemon, this is Paul now writing this letter. To Philemon, our beloved fellow worker. So Paul was saying he's a beloved fellow worker in the faith, Philemon, 
being a Christian. So Paul says he was a fellow worker in the faith. And Paul says, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayer. Paul says, Philemon, I always thank God for you each time I remember you in my prayer. Listen to this. Because I heard of your love and of the faith that you have towards the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. Paul said, Philemon, the reason why I pray for you and always lift you up in my prayer because I heard of your love. I know of your love for the saints, all those who are in Christ. You have a genuine love for them. And so I am praying for you and I've prayed for you. Now, the Apostle Paul went down in the letter and saying, For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love. This is not Paul saying all these things about Philemon. My brothers, because the, the heart of the saints have been refreshed, refreshed to you. So here is it. Paul is saying a number of things about Philemon. Paul is saying, Philemon, you're a wonderful brother in the faith. You have blessed the Christian. You have refreshed them. Meaning he always have something to minister to the saints in the body of Christ. So Paul says, Philemon, you're a wonderful brother. And I know that. And so I have been praying for you that God may strengthen you. Now Paul is moving to present a case. Paul is a master writer. Paul did all that which was true and said all this that was true about Philemon to a particular thing and so Paul said accordingly though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required yes Paul getting in the matter yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you Paul said listen man Philemon what I'm going to say to you now I can demand you in this way but he said for love's sake I'm not going to demand it I'm just appealing to you. Paul is a master writer. All right? And so Paul said, I'm not going to demand you to do what I'm asking. I'm just going to appeal to you now to do it. I, Paul, no, watch this. I, Paul, he says, an old man now, a prisoner also for Jesus Christ. So it is very clear where Paul was when he wrote this letter. Paul said, I'm now an old man. And I'm in prison for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes? I'm in prison for the Lord Jesus Christ. I appeal to you, Onisof, I appeal to you, Philemon, for my child, Onesimus. Now, remember, Onesimus was a slave in the house of Philemon. Philemon owned this slave. Something went wrong. Onesimus did some wrong to his, 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 his master and ran away. He ran away. Now, Onesimus ran to Rome to escape his masters. And somehow, Onesimus did something wrong again and end up in prison right beside the Apostle Paul. So what was happening now? I can imagine days and months after now, Paul get to know Onesimus. And Onesimus now starts sharing the story to the Apostle Paul. You know, Paul, I, I, I really am in here because I did something wrong. But I used to be somewhere else with a particular slave owner, my master. This was now Onesimus telling Paul the story. I used to be a slave in the house of Philemon. And he did something, I did something wrong, I run away from him. So now Paul here is perked up, as we said in Jamaica. Why? Because now, Paul and Philemon are colleagues in the faith. My brothers, we are talking about forgiveness, but my message this morning is a story. And so Paul now here, when Paul heard Onesimus share his story with him about Philemon, whom he ran away from, Paul listened Onesimus' story in prison. Alright? And so now Paul 
after he being in prison with Onesimus for how long? We are not sure how long Onesimus was in prison with him. But for that period, what happened is that Onesimus now came to know Jesus Christ as his Savior. Praise God. Paul led Onesimus to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And it was now about time for Onesimus to be released. Remember now, Paul is there for life. God, they are going to kill him. But here is now, Onesimus was now about to be released again and to go on the road. But Paul knew the story now of the slave Philemon who was his bridging and Christian friend in the faith. Onesimus was the servant of Philemon. He did something wrong and he ran away. No, Onesimus is a Christian. And Paul is now saying, you are going to be released. I am sending you back to your master, Philemon. I can imagine how painful that might have been to hear that. Because some oh, Onesimus maybe have decided just to come out and just keep running because he don't want his master Philemon to see him. But his heart was changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I am sending you back to your master Philemon. But Paul says, before you go, I am going to send a letter ahead of you to Philemon. And this is the letter that Paul wrote. And so Paul says, I appeal to you for my child. Praise God. Paul says, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus. No, Philemon ears must have perked up when he heard Paul talking about Onesimus, the same servant who robbed him and ran away. So Paul says, he's now my child. I know a child in the faith, all right? Whose father I become in prison. Paul says, I am now a spiritual father in prison. In now, Paul is saying in this letter to Philemon, Philemon, this young man, Onesimus, is now a Christian. He is now in the faith. I am sending him back to you. I want you to forgive him and to accept him. Our title, our topic this morning for this week is Forgiveness, God's Design. And so Paul wrote this letter. <clears throat> now listen to this, I'm going further. Paul says, he's my son in prison. Formally, formally, in other words, before he was useless to you. Paul said, listen to me, Philemon, before... This Onesimus was useless to you. But now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you. I'm sending him back to you. Sending my very heart. Hallelujah. Paul says I'm sending back this one who used to be a servant. He was useless to you. Only thing he used to do is just serve you around the house doing that. But Paul says he is now more useful to you and to me. And I am sending back and I am asking you. Paul said earlier, I could have commanded you. And I'm going to tell you why Paul says that. But Paul says, I am appealing to you, Philemon, to accept. To receive again Onesimus. Forgive him for what he has done to you. Because now he is a brother in the faith. And Paul says, he is my very heart. Paul says, I'm, se I'm not just sending back a man named um, file Onesimus to you. I'm sending back my very heart to you. I would have been glad to keep him. Paul says, you know, I would have been glad to keep him with me. In order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. Nothing without your consent. In order that your goodness might not be compulsory. But of your own art and accord. Paul says, you know, he's such a useful man now in the kingdom. 
I could have Allah asked him to stay in, in town so that he could have brought food and refresh me when I read it. But Paul says, no. I am sending this man back to you. Brothers and sisters, I want you to listen to this story. Please. And I want you to go back and read it. This is one of the most powerful, amazing story of forgiveness in the scripture, in the New Testament. A powerful story of forgiveness. No, hear what Paul says now. For this purpose is why he was parted from you for a while that you might have him back forever. Hallelujah. Paul says, I'm now sending him back to you. I'm sending Onesimus back to you. Paul says, he's my very heart. He's now a brother in the faith. He's now a slave and a servant of God. And I'm sending him back to you now, Philemon. I know he had wronged you before. I know he had robbed you. He told me about the story. I know he did you bad. But no, listen what Paul says in verse 15. I love this. For this purpose, for this purpose is why he was parted from you. Paul said, you know the reason why he was parted from you? The reason why he robbed you? The reason why he ran away? The reason why God allowed him to meet me in prison, it was a divine appointment, Paul is saying to me, to, to, uh, to Philemon. This was a divine appointment that he ran away, he ended up, ended up in Rome, and he ended up in my prison cell. God sent him here, and Paul is now saying, for this purpose is why he was parted, him run away from you for a while. But this is what Paul says, you might have him back now forever. Hallelujah. Paul says he ran away for a while. No God has changed his heart, Philemon. I am now sending back Onesimus to you. And Paul is saying that you can now have him forever. I'm saying to you, I'm appealing to you, Paul says, Philemon, forgive him. Forgive him. Forgive him for what he has done. No, Paul goes ahead, deeper brother and sister in this. Paul went ahead a little deeper. And hear what Paul says. Paul says, no longer. Paul said, I want you to receive him forever. But Paul says, I want you to receive him no longer a slave. Receive him back, but don't receive him as a slave. No more a slave. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave. He is now a beloved brother. Paul is now saying, this man is coming back to you, Philemon. I am appealing to you, re receive him. He's no longer a slave, but he's now a brother in the Lord. Receive him. Receive him. Paul said, he's especially to me, but how much more is now a brother to you, both in the flesh and in the spirit, in the Lord. So Paul goes on to say, so my brother Philemon, it's a story. So my brother Philemon, if you consider me, the Apostle Paul, as a brother, as one who, who walked together, we, 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 we serve in ministry together. Paul said, so if you consider me, your partner, your brother, receive him as you would receive me. Paul said the same way Philemon. You would receive me if you consider me a brother. If you consider me a partner. Paul is making an appeal on behalf of a, a runaway slave. A slave who did his master bad. A slave who ended up in prison beside the apostle Paul. A slave who now accepted the Lord and no longer a slave. But now a brother in the faith. Paul is now saying to, to Philemon. If you are the same way you would have received me. I am now asking you, if you respect me that way, if you love me that way in the faith, I am now appealing to you to receive this man in the same way you would have received me. Now, watch this, brothers and sisters. Paul says, if he had wronged you, hallelujah, if he had wronged you at all, Paul said, Philemon, what? And this is a letter you know, that Paul sent ahead to Philemon. Before Onesimus reached there, 
Paul says, listen, if he has wronged you at all, if he owe you anything, Paul said, charge it to my account. This sound like Jesus to me, what Jesus did. Paul says, if Onesimus have wronged you, if him rob you anything, if him owe you anything, whatever he took and from you, took and run away from you, I'm sending him back to you, whatever he owes you, Paul says, I'm saying to you, put it on my account. Charge it to my account. Brothers and sisters, isn't what this Jesus did for us? Jesus put to our account, to his account, what we have done wrong. And when God the Father looked down on us, when God the Father wanted to bring judgment on us, Jesus who is the one who stands in between says, Father, put this on my account. What, what Pastor Lewis has done, charge it to my account. What brother this have done, what sister this have done, charge it to my account. I have forgiven them. Father, forgive them. Brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful story of forgiveness. Paul is saying, forgive him. My brother and sister, forgiveness is God's design. This is what God designed for us as brothers and sisters to walk in true, genuine forgiveness. If someone has hurt us, forgive them. Forgive them. Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they have done. But let me go a little further in the story. Paul says, if he has wronged you or he owes you anything, Paul says, charge it to my account. I, Paul, know what Paul says. I, Paul, write this letter with my own hand. I will repay it, Paul says. To say nothing of you owing me even your very life. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, you might have never read this, this, this book. Hear what Paul was saying to Philemon. Philemon, listen me. First of all, I will repay what Onesimus has stolen or taken from you. Paul said, I will repay him. Receive him, forgive him, accept him again. Paul says, I will repay. But hear what Paul goes on to say. I will repay it. To say nothing of your own owing me, even your life. Paul says, I'm not even going to say what you have owed me. Paul says to, um, to, 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 to Philemon, Philemon, you owe me your very life and I have forgiven you. So what has happened is that something has happened in the past that Paul didn't speak of, but he said it, hinted it in this letter. Paul says, Philemon, remember, you owe me your very life. I had forgiven you for what you have done to me and you owe me your very life. So Paul is now saying, I want you now to demonstrate the same forgiveness that was demonstrated to you. Brothers and sisters, if we do not forgive others, God will not forgive us. Paul said the same way you were forgiven by me, I am now saying, and I am sending back Onesimus to you, and I'm saying to you, you must now forgive Onesimus. Hallelujah. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart. And hear what Paul do say now to, to, to sum up the thing. Hear what Paul do and sum up the thing. Confident of your obedience, Philemon. Paul said, I, Paul, am confident of your obedience that you are going to forgive him. I am confident that you are going to forgive him and you are going to receive him. Confident of your obedience. I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. Hear what Paul said, brother, brother Philemon. Hmm. My brother Philemon. I am confident 
as I send back Onesimus to you, I am confident that you are going to do even more than what I have asked you to do. You're going to do more than this. And so the Apostle Paul sent and signed this letter. And he sent this letter to Philemon. Now, brothers and sisters, that's about three things I want to say. I hope that you have got the message through the story. And that's what I want to start with this week. Because I'm sure this week all of my brothers will be coming with different aspects of forgiveness. And so I just want to roll the pitch in terms of this story of forgiveness. Not digging deep in the theological aspect of it. Others will be doing that. But I want to say three things to us, brothers and sisters. First, forgiveness should not be rooted in a person's performance. Forgiveness should not be rooted in a person's performance. Let me explain that. What am I saying? You and I should not wait until we see people start at better towards us to forgive them. If Jesus did that, hallelujah, if Jesus did that, all of us would have still been in our sin. All of us would still be in a state of sinfulness. We would not be forgiven because our performance was not good. What am I saying to us? Forgiveness should not be rooted in a person's performance. Do not wait, my brothers and sisters. Pastor Mark, me now forgive them until me say, holy for changing of them life. Brothers and sisters, that was not the way oh God treated us. Forgiveness is not rooted in a person's performance. Do not wait, my brothers and sisters, to see what your mother or your father or your teacher years ago who did something wrong in your class or your brothers and your biological brother or sister or your husband or your wife or your church brother or sister. Do not wait, brothers and sisters, to forgive them. Do not wait to see them life change. Me nah, me nah, me nah, me nah forgive them until me see them change them life. Me nah forgive them until me see them change everything towards me. Brothers and sisters, forgiveness is not rooted in a person's performance. If Jesus was to wait... For our performance to be good. To see us begin to do some good things. Before he forgive us. We would still be in our sin today. So don't wait until somebody's performance change. Forgive them even while. Their performance is still evil. Even while their performance. Their behavior is still wrong towards you. Forgive them. Pastor Mark is that easy. I'm not saying it easy. But it's a higher life. It's a higher life. God has called us. It's a higher calling. It's a higher calling. It's you playing the big man, so to speak. The bigger one in the relationship. Even though you might be hurt, play the bigger part in forgiving them. And so even while... The situation don't, has not yet changed towards you. Forgive them. Reach out to them. Forgive them. I am appealing forgiveness is God's design for the Christian. Do not hold it against them. Forgive them. So that's one thing I want to say to us. The second thing is that forgiveness brings freedom. Forgiveness brings freedom to you, the individual, and also to the other persons you have forgiven. Forgiveness is such a powerful thing, brother. 
when you and I extend forgiveness towards somebody, it brings freedom to me who have forgive the person, but it also brings forgiveness to the person who you have forgiven. It brings forgiveness. It brings healing. It brings freedom. It brings freedom, my brothers and sisters. In Colossians 3 and verse 13, I'll read this passage and I'll wrap up and I'll pray with us. In Colossians 3 and verse 13, let me read verse 12 and 13. Therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. It said, put on these things. Look what verse 13, verse 13 says. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ has forgiven you, so you also must do. Forgive one another. If someone has a writ against you, he said, just as Christ has forgiven you, forgive one another my brothers and sisters i appeal to all of us as the apostle paul appealed to philemon for onesimus to forgive him a runaway slave hurt his master and ran away set it up he ran away to Rome did something wrong ended up in prison in the same cell with Paul bridging if that is not God design then I don't know what it is ended up in prison right beside Paul one day in prison Paul relaxed and Onesimus started to tell him why he's there in prison started to tell him about the story about a man named Philemon his master started to tell him what he did wrong started to tell him all the story Paul listened because Paul knew Philemon they were co-worker in ministry and so Onesimus gave his life to the Lord in prison was about to go back home continue on the run Paul says no I'm sending you back to Philemon your master but I'm gonna send a letter ahead to prepare your master to receive you Paul send this letter ahead and encouraging Philemon to receive Onesimus not as a slave anymore but as a brother Paul said, I know you're going to do more than what I've asked you. Brothers and sisters, as I close this wonderful story of forgiveness, let us start today. Let us start today, the last day in the month of August. Tomorrow is the 1st of September. Let us tie up everything today. Let us tie up everything today. Those who we can make a call to and ask for forgiveness. Those who we need to call today and forgive them. Yes, pastor, I know they might have hurt you. Yes, pastor, I know that they might have done wrong. Yes, pastor, I have been hurt by them, pastor. But I'm saying to you today, this morning, forgive. Forgive them. Forgive them. Because when you extend forgiveness, what you're doing, you're healing yourself as well as the other person. I challenge us today to forgive somebody today of what they have done, what they might have said to hurt you, the wrong they have done to you. Forgiveness is God's design. I encourage you also to read the story again. Go back over the story and see what God has done in this beautiful story of forgiveness. 
Let us pray this morning. Holy Father, we thank you this morning that you have forgiven us and you have called us to forgive. Father, I know someone might be saying this morning, Pastor, it is hard. Pastor, they have hurt me so bad. Pastor, I have been hurt more than once. Pastor, yes, I heard it. But I'm saying that you and I have hurt God so many times. You and I have done so many things that hurt the heart of God. Yet he forgives. I pray this morning that we will find the courage to forgive. We will find the strength this morning to forgive. Oh God, may our hearts burn within us that we will not be comfortable anymore in this unforgiveness because forgiveness is God's design. I pray for everyone this morning who have heard this devotion and who will be hearing it somewhere down the road I pray Holy Spirit of God that their heart will be moved and they will reach out to extend forgiveness thank you Father in Jesus name we pray brothers and sisters I encourage you I encourage you. Yes, uh, Mrs. Golding. I'm so happy, happy also to see you, Mrs. Golding. Uh, my very, very good friend and worker, Christian. Thank you, Mrs. Golding. You know, I'm saying to you this morning, right now, I'm just making this couple second appeal as the Lord laid my heart. Call somebody this morning. I don't care how long they have hurt you. I don't care how much the earth has sinking. I understand I have feelings too. But I'm saying that person who have done and hurt you, maybe it's a year ago, maybe it's two years ago, maybe it's five years ago. And because of that, there's a level of unforgiveness in your heart. There, there is no freedom. Anytime the person name come up, you want choke. Anytime the person name come up, a bitter feeling comes up. Don't let today pass, brothers and sisters. Call. Make a call today. Make a call to that mother. Make a call to your father who have hurt you. Make a call to that brother. Make a call to that auntie, wherever they are in the world. Make a call to that church brother, that church sister. Make a call to that school person. Make a call to that, that person today. And settle the matter. Free up yourself. And free other. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. What is a good day? If it's not also a godly day. Tune in tomorrow. 7.30. When another of our minister will be coming and sharing on forgiveness. God bless you all. Love you.